Hello, I'm Annette Young. In this special edition, we're here in the English city of Cambridge, which for many probably represents the very best of power, privilege and wealth. Yet it also happens to be Britain's most unequal city, with the divide between the haves and the have-nots becoming increasingly stark. This due to the cost of living crisis, not to mention Brexit, and it's women and children who are bearing the brunt. For hundreds of years, this historic university city has been home to the very best minds in the country. And more recently, a magnet for high-tech firms such as Apple and AstraZeneca. But you don't have to drive far to uncover the devastating impact of a rapidly declining economy. It's going to be another busy day at Abbey Food Hub in Eastern Cambridge. I am just putting out some new toothbrushes and some toothpaste because we, um, there was a news article which said that the number one cause of hospital admissions for children was actually due to tooth decay. A toothpaste like this would retail at five pounds, which for a lot of families is just too much. Welcome to Britain in 2023. This food bank, like so many across the country, has seen an explosion in demand as the cost of living crisis bites hard. The supermarkets are rationing a lot of the food because of all of the supply chain issues, so you can't buy more than three tins of, of tomatoes, for example, in one basket of shopping. So there's been lots of issues with um, HGV drivers, so the, the lorry drivers, because a lot of them come from European countries, so they're no longer wanting to come here. And then there's also a shortage of produce within the UK because of the energy costs. So you'll see here, we have no tomatoes, we have no cucumbers. We actually have quite a bit of salad veg today. We haven't had lettuce for weeks. According to data, food banks in the UK now outnumber McDonald's. And their clientele is so varied these days that even those who used to professionally help the disadvantaged are finding themselves in need, such as former social worker Lindsay O'Donnell. I was helping people get the help and support they need beyond uh, food poverty and yeah it's a lot worse and now you know I'm in the same situation. UK statistics show women are impacted the most in this crisis due to the gender pay gap as well as holding 69% of low paid and insecure jobs. Anna Galinsky is also a volunteer at this food bank she recently separated from the father of her children and as a result took a massive financial hit. After paying all her bills, she only has around 60 euros left to live on each month. High rent in Cambridge means she now lives on a boat. It was impossible to get regular housing. The rent in Cambridge is, you know, double what I could afford. You know, I might have been able to get a room in a shared house, but that would... That would have been the most. Um, and I was lucky I had a little bit of inheritance saved away, so that put down a deposit on the boat and then I got a loan as well. So that was, yeah. Buying a house would have been impossible. Renting would have been impossible. Um, I can't get on, there, there's no council houses and I couldn't have got on the, the list for a council house. A 2018 report by the Centre for Cities found the wealth in Cambridge is far more unevenly distributed among residents than in any other UK city, including Oxford and London. This due to it having a much greater share of highly paid, high-skilled jobs. We're at the Eakin Road Council Estate with Alex Boulat, a local councillor. Originally from Romania, the 26-year-old spends much of her time knocking on doors, talking to locals about their increasing financial woes. 
what's really interesting about this area is that when people think about Cambridge, we think about a quite a wealthy area. And actually, Abbey is one of the more deprived areas of Cambridge, and there's quite a lot of inequality. And for a lot of people, what's shocking to know is that the life expectancy here is about 10 years lower than the neighbouring, some of the neighbouring areas in Cambridge City. You must find this very depressing at times, I imagine. I think it's a depressing state of affairs for everyone living in the UK at the moment. But honestly, myself, I don't find surprising what I hear because I go through very similar situations like my residents do. I also worry about the cost of my energy bill that more than doubled compared to last year. So I think although it's, a very, it's very sad to think about the situation that we're, we're living in, I think we need more people who actually go through those situations to be able to represent the interests of the community in the current state of politics. With outrage over the lack of pay rises and cuts to public spending meant for the first time ever, UK doctors and nurses went out on strike. I went to meet Kelly McPhee, a senior nurse at Adam Brooks Hospital, who decided to join them. This is my smart meter, so it monitors all our, all our electricity and our gas consumption. I don't think really before last summer I looked at it very often at all, but definitely the last sort of two or three months I've seen my bills go increase horrendously. Um, so last August my bills were about £120 a month and now it's over 360 I definitely am more careful about what I go out and do. So if I'm going to go out to a restaurant or um, out for a day trip, I usually take a packed lunch so I haven't got to buy any food when I go out. And I'll think about if I'm driving somewhere, um, how much is it going to cost in petrol? And I didn't really used to consider that on the cost of a day, but now if it's £40, say, for a ticket to go somewhere, then I've also got to think about the cost of how much it's going to cost to get there. And so it does stop you from doing certain things because you know that you can't actually fit that into your budget and afford it. You have a seven-year-old daughter. How is she coping? She is definitely very cost-aware. So if, for example, I said we were going to go out and have, you know, should we have fish and chips for tea? She'll quite often say, oh, no, Mummy, we don't need to spend any money tonight. We'll just get to have something out of the freezer. And the fact that doctors and nurses have gone out on strike, I mean, that's unheard of in Britain, isn't it? It is. I've been a nurse since 2008 and we've never striked until now. And I think the impact of the pandemic and Brexit, people's resilience is just so much lower than it was before. And it's got to a point where we're seeing patients suffering and we need to do something to stop that. With what you've been telling me, what does this say about the future of the UK? It's a really difficult future to see as being a positive thing at the moment. It's, um, there are things we're going to have to overcome in order to move forward, and there are definitely changes that need to happen. And what are those? I don't know. I wish I did. <laughs> a nation who hasn't witnessed widespread industrial action for many decades is now facing multiple crippling strikes. The aptly named Robin Hood pub in Cambridge is the location for local teachers who've walked off the job. The second is we take some more action, OK, and we can carry on announcing any more dates. And like the iconic folk hero, some say here that it's time to rob the rich in order to give to the poor. They talk about how funding cuts have seen a growing number of state schools cancel extracurricular activities, while others are finding it hard to pay for school supplies. My teacher's salary has stayed the same for the last 11 years. I've had no pay increase. I've had a tiny 1%, but it's so below inflation anyway. I have maybe £280 less a month than I had 10 years ago to spend because my salary's not gone up. Cost of living's gone up. My council tax has gone up. Gas electric's gone up. So I'm poorer and poorer as the months go by and the years go by. And I know teachers that go to food banks. They're working those sort of hours and they've got those bills going out and they're, they're struggling. The futures for our children is at a breaking point at the moment. I was diagnosed with ADHD and autism last year. It's 91% likely that my children will have it. 
luckily for me and my daughter, we have had amazing teachers who are putting in the reasonable adjustments for my daughter every single day so that she can learn the best possible way she can. But we can't guarantee that we're going to have amazing teachers for the rest of her school life. The funding needs to be put in place to support our children with extra learning difficulties because it's not fair. And then there's the issue of free meals for students. School lunches are the only meal that many children have. So they're coming into school, they haven't got anything else. Um, I mean, that's one of the things that the union's starting to fight for. We have children that should be getting free school meals, but the parents don't want to admit that they're in that situation. And so if free school meals were available for absolutely everybody, we wouldn't be putting anyone in that situation. Getting food to the table is not just a worry for schools. It's become a major concern for the bulk of UK households. As a result, there's one growth market, the sale of gardening tools and plant seeds. Cambridge businesswoman Abigail Plett is among the hundreds of thousands in the country who grows her own food. Basically, healthy food has become a luxury and uh, bad, unhealthy food is affordable. So it's just completely the wrong way around. Yeah, we, have, um, we have food shortages of the, the best and healthiest food and uh, th that's one of the reasons we grow ourselves because, um, yeah, helping others to eat, to, to have this food. To go into the shops and see nothing was really sobering because we're so reliant on doing nothing. There's no, there's no input from an individual to grow, to eat, I mean. You, you just go and you buy food. And we took that completely for granted. And, that, and then to have something not there, I think um, it was actually, it was a wake up call. And people need to know that if you want to survive and and do, you know, you may as well learn. These are simple skills <laughs> and anyone can do it. It seems the classic British saying, keep calm and carry on, no longer applies. Instead, many in Britain are uncharacteristically speaking openly and loudly about their financial woes. And the nation's politicians are very much being put on notice.